If football is known as the world's game, then China certainly wants it brought to its playground. Already an economic superpower, China wants to be a major force in football by 2050, with the government investing millions to help develop the sport at both grassroots and elite level. A host of big money, high profile signings have come to the Chinese Super League, a direct result of the TV rights being sold for $1.2 billion, 20 times more than the previous deal. A lot of money coming in to encourage you, okay, try, try, try. And to the end, some can be successful, but some can be failed. I think in, uh, in, in, chi in, China, in Chinese football now, we can see in uh, two or three years, definitely some uh, company will disappear uh, and some remain successful. But the problem is uh, to developing the real soccer in one country, big country like China, it takes uh, 10 years at least, 10, 15 years. So finally, the, the Chinese football could get the, the benefit from that. Spending in China during the last transfer window for the first time exceeded that of the Premier League. The total amount paid for players in China was more than $250 million, compared with $223 million in England. Football may be grabbing a lot of the attention in China as businesses and investors clamour to be part of a lucrative and expanding marketplace. So, as the geography of football shifts towards Asia, many other sports are watching on with interest. What I call this, this is a wake-up call for China brand or China uh, companies. Now they okay, now I understand. Okay, this is a huge opportunity. The hasn't done a very good job. So before we didn't recognize or we didn't realize how big the platform they have. It's a great interest. It is a, uh, five or ten years ago nobody asked me nobody called me but now the people are starting to call me already this century China has hosted the Olympics in 2008 and will host the Winter Games in 2022 they've also produced global stars including basketball's Yao Ming but the investment in football is the start of the country's next wave of sporting plans Wider than that, we're seeing development of winter sports in the build-up to the, uh, the 2022 Beijing uh, uh, Olympic Games. Uh, and uh, the KHL, the, the second best ice hockey league in the world, recently announced uh, that there's going to be a franchise in Beijing starting from this upcoming season. So this is a wider story, as you said. Football, yes, basketball, they're ongoing stories, but a winter sports, a big push. And then, of course, other sports, tennis, golf, and, and really uh, all across the board, there's, uh, there's investment. Foreign investment from China is also on the rise. Italian club AC Milan won the last of their seven European Cups only nine years ago, but have fallen behind other major clubs since. However, they're now in advanced talks with a consortium headed up by Beidou search engine owner Robin Lee over an estimated $437 million takeover. They'd be following city rivals Inter, who last month completed the sale of a 70% stake to the Sunning Group as part of an overall deal worth over three quarters of a billion dollars. The group also controls Chinese Super League side Jiangsu Sunning, who signed Brazilian midfielder Ramirez from Chelsea for $32 million in January. The key takeaway from the signings is it really demonstrates the ambition that Sunning has in, in not only in the China Super League, but also in, in Serie A now as the, as the owners of, uh, the majority owners of, of Inter Milan. I think they've really um, shown to, to the world that they're willing to, uh, to invest in the club, they want to win, they have huge ambitions um, and as they said at the press conference and have said throughout our discussions, um, they want to return into to, to the top of Syria and to the top of Europe. Steps are being taken at grassroots as well, as the Chinese FA plan to have 50 million adults and children regularly playing football within four years with the best football brains from outside of China being hired to increase participation. They can only play uh, four foreign players, can't they? So, you know, so the bulk of the side is, is, is still Chinese. So they're going to have that. If, if we can be part of the growth of China to develop the youngsters, and at this moment in time, there's a, there's, um, they're paying big wages, but there's a high demand for players, but there's not enough players to actually um, support that, that, that high demand. So what we're trying to do is now get in a grassroots to say, listen, we can help you as a country produce 
enough youngsters to come through to be taught by us, uh, have your coaches uh, taught by us, to produce uh, you know, a number of high-class coaches and high-class players. President Xi's 50-point plan to make the country a dominant force in football is already in action, with the overall goal to produce a national team capable of delivering the World Cup to China.